The front runners of the Ohio Republican Senate race got into a heated fight during a debate on Friday night. I can you tell filed you, that I, with the Federal Elections Commission you well, stock I, in Chinese I, Petro. I personally didn't buy the stock. You uh, made millions off it, sir. I don't think I made millions off of anything. I'd love to have made millions off of Chinese Petro. Uh, first of all, Shanghai Shenda and buying, Chinese Petro. Buying a second, right, you may not understand this because you've I never been in the private. No, you don't. I do. You've never been in the I private sector it. in your life. All right, I've worked, sir. Josh, squat, Josh. About Josh. Two tours in Iraq. Don't, don't tell me I haven't worked. Don't, don't tell me I haven't worked. You, you don't know squat. Yes, yes. It's okay, right? It's okay. You don't know squat. Two tours in Iraq, don't tell me I haven't worked. Back off, buddy, you're gonna You back off. Never, that'll happen. Sit down. Never. Watch. Watch. We'll swear it away with the wrong dude. No, no, you're dealing with the wrong guy. You watch what happens. You watch what happens. Sit down. Come on. Josh Mandel and Mike Gibbons, who you saw in that video, reportedly continued fighting off stage. These two are leading the pack of Republicans, hoping to take over the seat of Senator Rob Portman, who is retiring. The primary election is currently slated for May 3rd. Haley B. Miller is with me now. She is a political reporter for USA Today Network, Ohio. Hey there, Haley. Okay, so we saw that video exchange. Tell us a little bit more about what happened between Mike Gibbons and Josh Mandel. What is the backstory here? Well, I will start by saying every time we think we can predict something in this race, something like this happens. So Gibbons has been gaining on Mandel in the polls for the past several weeks. Uh, he, before that, Mandel was considered the presumptive front runner. He was leading all the polls. He also has the most name recognition of anyone um, running in the GOP primary. So. Going into this, this debate, you knew Mandel was going to go after Gibbons. Both men see each other as kind of their primary opponent at this point. And then things really just escalated from here. Mandel is known for being um, kind of an outlandish, aggressive, um, you know, very in your face. He casts himself as a fighter. And so this was an example of a situation where, you know, that just, he took that to the next level and appeared to get very angry when Gibbons made those comments. Um, can you kind of take a step back a little bit and kind of give us a sense of how this race is shaping up? You mentioned that these are the two leading contenders, but uh, what do we expect ahead of this Republican primary? This race has seen a lot of twists and turns, and we still don't have a clear sense two months out who might actually win the GOP nomination in May. The most consistent thing that we're seeing in the polls is that at least a third of Ohio Republican voters are still undecided. A lot of these folks, you know, have been touring the state, um, plastering people's TVs with advertisements, but they're still not an overwhelming favorite at this point. And, you know, it was Mandel for a while, and now Gibbons seems to be taking the lead. Um, but we're still waiting on former President Trump's endorsement. Uh, Senator Rob Portman, the senator who's retiring, endorsed, him, endorsed Jane Timken. So still a lot of uncertainty um, in these next couple months and a lot that could change. Yeah, I want to ask you about pre former President Trump's potential endorsement. He has said that he plans to endorse in this race, and all of the candidates in this race on the Republican side are vying for his endorsement. Um, do you think that any of them seem close at this point to getting it? And what would an endorsement from Trump mean in this primary? Well, I'll start with the second part of your question. You know, it certainly wouldn't be a big deal in Ohio this um is a very Republican state, uh, very much a Trump state. He won by eight points in both 2016 and 2020. So he's very popular, especially with the GOP primary base. And a candidate who got his endorsement would certainly stand to benefit from that. Whether that guarantees him victory, I don't know. But in terms of whether he will endorse, that's still an open question at this point. He has said in no uncertain term, terms that he will not endorse uh, Matt Dolan, the state senator running in this race, and the only one who's not aggressively courting his support. But beyond that, Trump has a laundry, laundry list of issues with pretty much everyone in the race, whether it's past comments they made or just their general approach to the campaign. And, you know, as we know, Trump doesn't like to pick losers. He likes to be sure of the candidates that he endorses. And, 
you know, as I mentioned, there's still a lot of uncertainty. And so some of his advisors have said it's possible he'll just stay out of it. Yeah, certainly he'll be watching the polling because he does not like to endorse losers, as, as you mentioned. Um, this is a really crowded primary. One candidate we haven't talked about yet is J.D. Vance. And it's really interesting to watch his evolution over the course of this campaign. He has worked um, to distance himself from how he previously described himself, which was a, quote, never Trump guy. So how is he doing with that? He... At many of his events, he starts out by talking to people about that because he knows it's kind of the elephant in the room and certainly the thing that his opponents have been attacking him on. The way he presents it is that back in 2016, he didn't think Trump was going to fulfill all the promises he was making and that Trump basically proved him wrong. Um, that still hasn't accounted for some of the other comments that he made about, um, you know, the former president's supporters and things like that. Um, you know, he, it's certainly something that people are asking him about. They're curious about his change of heart. Um, I don't know that, you know, there may be people out there who will not vote for him because of this. It's hard to say right now, but um, it is something that's coming up a lot and he's had to account for it. All right. Well, a lot of characters in this race will all be watching very closely uh, and may is supposed to be the day for or the month for the primary. A lot of other interesting primaries that we, that month. So we will keep an eye. Haley B. Miller, thank you so much for being with us.